Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. So real estate market is on fire, and I think we've all heard about that. But the other interesting thing that uh, is going on right now is the uh, governments and uh, different financial regulatory institutions are trying to dampen down it a little bit by bringing in new rules um, for mortgage, uh, mortgage financings. And so I wanted to check in with a friend of mine who's a very successful lawyer, uh, specializes in real estate um, uh, financings, uh, purchases, and estate law. Uh, it's Sarita Samaru for SST. Uh, law professional corporation and find out you know number one what the real estate market is all about how financings are and more importantly then how these regulatory changes are going to impact you know your and my probably most important uh, investment decision of our lifetimes Sarita how are you I'm very well thank you Brian for Welcome having to, me uh, the show thank you so much thank so, you so so you know everyone talks about the real estate market being on fire is it it is yes it's been a record year um, more so than even 2020. Um, I would say that's attributed to the fact that uh, the interest rates are so low. Uh, you can obtain an interest rate around somewhere right now between 1.3 to 1.5 percent. Uh, variable. On a variable rate. Yep. Yes, exactly. On a fixed, a little bit higher, 1.9. Uh, but as a result of that, people have decided, uh, especially during times of COVID, to upsize and uh, to ensure they have a larger space for their... Working that, at home. Yes, exactly. From working at home for them and their spouses and for their children with the online schooling. So uh, we've seen a lot of people transition, also move out of the city and move into more rural areas. And uh, it, it's been very hot. I mean, we've, we've rural never seen... Rural or suburban? Uh, I've heard suburban, but actually rural? Rural areas, really? yeah. I've seen, I've had a majority of my closings, a lot of them in Niagara Falls region, Guelph, uh, all outside of the city of Toronto or even outside of the GTA. So a lot of it's driven, people think, by these you know, historically low interest rates. Yes. And uh, what has happened recently that the government and uh, financial institutions have put in place to try to dampen that? So what they're bringing in into effect um, and the proposed changes with OSFI, which is the Office of the Superintendent, um, they're... Uh, financial institutions. Financial institutions, yes. The Office of the Superintendent, Superintendent of Financial, financial institutions. institutions. Correct. OSFI have yes. brought in new regulations. Correct, And yes. what are those new regulations? And uh, so what they're proposed, what they have proposed is to increase what we had and what a lot of people know as the stress test. So the stress test, uh, the threshold rate was previously 4.79%. They're thinking of increasing it to 5.25% or in the alternative, whatever you're currently paying with your interest rate and then add 2% to that amount. And so... But you just told me that interest rates are like 1.5. Right. So why would it be 5.2? Well, it'll be either or. It's really at the discretion of the bank. So let's just say you're getting a 1.5 interest rate. They'll add 2% to that. So they would test you on a 3.5% interest rate if the rates were to rise. And so essentially, if you're able to carry that, then you would qualify for a mortgage or in the alternative. And this is for non-insured mortgages. Okay, so this is- And for variable rate or fixed rate? Uh, either or, either or. But if you fixed it, then you're not susceptible to rate increases. So why would you have to have a test, a stress test for an interest rate higher than the fixed rate uh, that you put in place? Doesn't make logical sense. So when you renew though, within the five year period, more than likely the interest rates will increase because the Bank of Canada has stated that they will likely not uh, raise rates past 2023, or past 2023 rather, they will increase interest rates, but prior to 2023, they will not increase interest rates. Okay, They'll I, keep the I benchmark agree with you. Rate. However, the best bet of what interest rates are gonna happen is the Canadian bond yield curve. Mm -hmm. And the yield curve right now is 100 basis points higher in the three year time frame, uh, And it's 200 basis higher in the 10 year time frame. Right. So 200 basis points plus one and a half is three and a half, right. it's not 5.2. Exactly, but it's, it's at the discretion of the bank. It's at the discretion of the underwriter. So just dependent on what you may do as your profession, uh, I would say that- It sounds unfair. It is, it and is. And what it's doing is it's, 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 it's harming people that are trying to enter the market today, new home buyers, 
That's not what we want. It, it is prejudicing uh, new home buyers, but also to, I think, it is necessary because there's an influx of people coming into the market and eventually it may be that they can't afford those homes where they've upsized. So I think that is a way to regulate it to some extent. It'll cool off the market. Again, it's not the best for my business. Has it cooled off the market? It, it, it will if it takes effect June 1st. June 1st, 2021 is when they propose that these changes are to take place. If they do take place, if it, if those proposals pass through. So uh, if in fact it does, then yeah. So what often happens when regulatory uh, changes occur and it, they're pre-announced is a whole bunch of people want to do things before the regulatory. So are you like going crazy yes. prior to that uh, deadline? Absolutely. Everyone is trying to meet that deadline. Everyone, there is an influx and people are trying to get in before the rules do may change. So uh, people are trying to buy homes and they're looking for homes and they are uh, quite stressed out about the fact that this may in fact affect them. So they are looking and and trying to get at least secure the rate or the approval prior to June 1st. So yes, you, you will see a bit of a slowdown though if it does take effect from June, I'd say June, July, it may, unless they, unless there were individuals that were pre-approved prior to June 1st. But you know what, what this is doing is making it more difficult to get a sizable mortgage. And so therefore the mortgage that you would be able to get at you know, one and a half percent interest rate versus 5.2 percent interest rate is obviously a substantially different amount of mortgage that you can afford with whatever income that you've got. Correct. And so, therefore, if a, a certain person, let's call myself, wants to go out and buy a house, and uh, and I get X mortgage at at the current interest rate, um, but I can afford far less at this uh, 5.2, um, what you're going to do is you're going to not upsize. You're going to you're, you're still going to buy. If you have to buy, you're still going to buy, but you're going to buy a a smaller home and so how does that actually help because then there's more demand for the smaller homes so what they're trying to do is they're trying to dampen home prices but I don't see how this dampens home prices because people are still gonna buy they're just gonna buy a smaller home they will but I think it'll it'll lower the bidding wars the amount of bidding wars also too it's not just but limited people are gonna bid just on a on a different sized home a cheaper home they're still gonna bid what the bidding wars got to be because of supply and demand there's more people that want a home than the homes that are available right yes. like otherwise yeah it's just that they're not going to be bidding on a million dollar home rather than a two million dollar home because they can't afford the mortgage on a two million dollar home but you're still going to have and frankly you might be squashing people into a the the lower end of the market or yes. the middle and lower end of the market which means it's even more competitive and you're going to get more of a, a overheated market at that lower end. Well, what's interesting? It's interesting that you say that because the condo market was affected. So if I can afford a luxury home, it might be good for me because everyone. Oh, no kidding. That's right. That's right. But but the condo market was affected. So what we saw was um, with the evolution of COVID was the fact that the uh, the demand for condos lowered and the demand for freehold properties increased and more spacious homes that were required. So what we may see is uh, us going back now to a demand for uh, condominiums. Condos. Yes. And but it's so also not more spacious homes. It's more spacious homes in more farther afield, more cheaper markets. And so therefore people may have still been paying comparable amounts, but they were getting, you know, a bigger home in, in a rural setting or a you know, a 905 setting than they could if they were in the 416. I don't I just, I don't think this is the way that uh, you dampen a housing bubble, if there is a housing bubble. We're gonna take a break and come back more with uh, Sarita Samaru just after a few minutes of messages. Stay with us. Bank of Punjab Laya, Pakistan ka pehla mukammal free Roshan digital account. Jisse aapko mile mobile app. Dunya bhar mein debit card ki free delivery aur bina charges ke istemal ki sahula. Naya Pakistan certificate. Stock market mein investment ka mokha. Auto loan aur online utility bills jaisi beshumar sahuliya. Abhi www.bop.com.bk par online Roshan digital account form fill kijiye. Aur paaye excellence unit ke zariye 24 ghante dedicated services. Bank of Punjab. Ontario का COVID-19 प्लान फैलाव को रोकने और जिंदगियां बचाने में मदद फराहम कर रहा है। जब तक हम सब को वैक्सीन नहीं लग जाती, मास्क पहने, अपने हाथ धोएं और फासला रखें। हम अब तक इकट्ठे चलते रहे हैं और पूरे ऑन्टारियो में रोजाना हजारों लोग वैक्सीन लगवा रहे हैं। आपकी बारी जल्द आने वाली है। 
آنٹیریو کے ویکسین پلان کے بارے میں مزید جانیں ادائیگی شدہ من جانب حکومت آنٹیریو Century 21 Kingdom Realty We take delight in helping people succeed whether they are our clients or agents Worldwide recognized brand Game changing technology State of the art marketing Industry leading training Stunning office Great location Great commission splits First access to pre-construction projects If you want to be even more successful in your real estate career Join the Century 21 Kingdom Realty To join our team, call 416-560-9559 or visit our website www.jointhekingdom.ca Century 21 Kingdom Realty, 1099 Kingston Road, Pickering, Unit No. 2, Ontario. Here's to the people. Pioneers searching for better. Ambitious fortune seekers in strange new places. They're the inspiration behind Zoom, the fast and secure money transfer app from PayPal. Buying or selling a residential or commercial property is one of the biggest financial decisions most people will make in their life. The real estate lawyers at Alum Law Chambers will guide you through the complete real estate laws to ensure your transaction completes on time and your dreams come true. Reliable and affordable Alum Law. Was your family or business prepared for this financial crisis? Want to learn how I prepare my clients with the essential financial planning pyramid for any financial crisis come their way? Hello, this is Zahir Sayed from Roach Financial. For your complimentary Zoom or Skype meeting, call my office at 905-624-0008 or visit aroochfinancial.com. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Welcome back to The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. It's a pleasure of mine to... Uh, to chat tonight with Sarita Samaru, who is a lawyer. Uh, she specializes in, in real estate and estates uh, with the SST uh, Law Professional Corporation. Uh, and she knows what she's talking about in regards to uh, mortgage financing because she does that day in and day out, right? Yes. <laughs> Lots of them and real estate closings. Yes, I do. Yeah, I just, I'm just seeing the pattern. I'm seeing the trend. And uh, part of what we were talking about earlier, um, outside of them raising the threshold of uh, being OSFI, um, it'll also affect uh, the credit score that people have to have in order to obtain a mortgage. So, so uh, tell us what a credit score is, yes. how it's impacted, and how it's changing. Right. So under 680 is poor to moderate, essentially. 680 and above is deemed to be moderate, and anything typically above 750 and over is a very good or excellent. And, and, and what is a 750 or 680 credit score? It's uh, out of 1,000 or out of what? Um, no, it's not. It goes up to about 850, 860 or so. Um, so banks generally look to see uh, if you can maintain your payments, and they will look at that. So what? How does one negatively impact a credit score? Uh, 
having more typically than 70% uh, at any given time on your credit. So if you have on your credit cards, you've maxed it out for at least 70% of the available balance, then you're affecting your credit. You should always have at least 30% room available. I'm, I'm almost speaking in a way as a sense that typically what mortgage brokers would give you this advice. I don't qualify people, just a clarification, but that much I do know having had mortgages m over many years. Right. So uh, advice that was given to me by mortgage brokers alike. So um, never max out your credit card. Never max out your credit card. Only always go up have to 70%. Right, okay. it, and if less if available, I mean, just and pay it off um, every month essentially. So uh, someone with possibly a credit and, score. And also things like, uh, uh, pay your bills on time. That's right. Because if you start defaulting on some of the bills and they come after you, then that's going to impact your credit score. That's correct. And for sure, don't go bankrupt. That's right. Oh, absolutely. That affects your credit for seven years. So uh, what, the, what OSFI is proposing as well, in addition to the 5.25 stress test or interest rate that they would base your uh, interest rate on if you could afford it following uh, any increase is uh, to ensure you have a credit score of 680 and above, which actually is a quite high threshold because previously it was 600 mm -hmm. uh, a, prior to these proposals uh, being put forward. So uh, it's quite it's quite a jump, uh, you know, to be honest. That I, I find a little bit unfair because um, banks will have such a high threshold for individuals. And then we have different types of lenders. We have the um, a lenders, which are your institutional banks, your B lenders, which are your credit unions or smaller banks, your C lenders, which are your private lenders. So what the trend that I have seen as a real estate lawyer has been, I've seen less of a demand for private mortgages. So my private lenders have been complaining that they don't have a lot of business because typically they offer to individuals that don't qualify with a B lender or an A lender interest only rates. So let's say somewhere ranging between 8.5% all the way up to possibly 13% interest only. Um, so their their market uh, decreased in this environment where we had interest such low interest so low. rate. Yeah. But what will happen now? They'll typically, come back. it'll come back. But exactly. the re these regulatory changes don't apply to them. No, it doesn't. So, private, so private lenders. You know, people are still going to be able to get the money, but they're going to be getting it from C lenders, Correct. private lenders. Correct. And that is also, there's some danger in that as well, because those are the untraceable mortgages. So until there's regulations brought in by OSFI to regulate private lenders, those are the untraceable mortgages. That was with the bubble that had burst in the U.S. In the United States. That's right. So... Um, you can't trace those outside of the registration on title. You cannot trace those mortgages. And then some people will end up getting second and third mortgages. So my advice has been to other solicitors is just, you know, give your clients that knowledge to ensure that they don't overextend themselves by getting first, second and third mortgages, because that is where the danger truly but lies. My, my experience and you're you've got the practical experience more than, than I in this. But my experience is people decide sort of the size of house they want. And, uh, and, they, and then they fall in love with the house because they, they go and they see 10 or 20 homes and they fall in love with the house. And if all of a sudden it's costing you $100,000 or $200,000 more, yes. you lever up. That's right. You go and get that, uh, that, that uh, B lender or that C lender and you find the money. Correct. Or you go and you borrow it from your mom or dad or your cousin Phil. That's right. But more than likely you will not find your institutional lender. So, this, so here's what- the But those Bs and Cs yes. are higher interest rates. That's right. And they're tougher on you they with are. covenants. And then all of a sudden what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to be still fueling this bubble, but it's going to be fueled by more expensive debt and debt that's you know, got more covenants and more controls and is going to come and default on you more quickly. Well, this is how the institutional banks will protect themselves. I mean, this is more protection for institutional lenders. So not this is protecting the banks, not correct. us. Correct. That's right. That's right. Because people will still continue to purchase, as you mentioned. It may not slow down the market because, as you mentioned, there isn't enough supply for the demand. Uh, however, um, the banks are giving out too many mortgages, in my personal opinion. Um, they can't keep up with the demand. We get mortgage instructions at the 11th hour as real estate solicitors. And um, we have to facilitate a quick closing for clients now. And um, it, it's quite a bit of work, of quite a bit of extra work. So th they have to slow that down. I mean, uh, why they have not hired additional uh, assistance within their own internal departments is beyond me. Uh, but again, this will slow down the institutional so, market. Do you think we have a housing bubble? We, we don't because when these regulations are brought in, it tends to slow down the market and people think twice whether or not they're, they're going to look to purchase or um, 
you know, they may not get qualified, so they'll get discouraged because we always, typically real estate agents will put in a clause, so it's conditional on financing. Yeah. So, it, so this really is more to discourage buyers from jumping in uh, feet first, essentially. So I think this will just, it'll slow it down, but not in a negative manner um, because I think banks in general in Canada are quite cautious. And I think uh, we have some of the best regulatory standards in the world, to be honest so with you. So you don't think we got a bubble that's going to burst? No, this is going to this is going to do its intended. Uh, it's going to have its intended impact, and it's going to slow things down. Uh, I, yes, I do believe that because we're not slowing down. Um, so if you're going to advise me or someone that's out looking for a home, what yes. are you telling us? You're telling us don't overleave her. Yes. Don't go go to the A lenders and the B lenders maybe, but don't go to the C lenders. Uh, if if you really have no other chance and you're stuck in a deal, then if you have no other means in order to obtain a mortgage, then you do have to go to a C lender. Just to, to, but eventually switch it over. Have a uh, you know a small term with that C lender if you have absolutely zero choice. But my advice to clients right now is get your pre-approval at least four months prior to closing. Um, don't four it, months prior. Yeah, that's at least a long ha time. Have a long closing date because what I'm seeing more often than I'd like is that the financing falls through at closing, and I'm at a loss. I cannot close your deal without mortgage instructions. So if I don't have that in place, but if you got a financing out, at least you're not you're not at risk. You, you don't get the house, but you don't you can't be sued. Well, no, not necessarily. If you don't close your deal, then your deposit could be held up in court for a couple of years. Right. Um, you know, the, the vendor is always obligated to mitigate their losses. But that being said, uh, <laughs> your, your deposit will be tied up and it'll be difficult for you to purchase again. So get your financing in order first. Do not waive the conditional on financing. And I always recommend never, never waive the condition on home inspection. Always get a Never waive home. the condition on home inspection. Never waive the condition on financing. Any other last rules? Uh, and just get your financing much farther ahead financing of time. Financing in place four months ahead of time. At least, at minimum, b based on the volume that the banks are getting currently. Well, you heard it from Sruta Samaru, a uh, lawyer that specializes in uh, in home uh, real estate uh, financings as well as acquisitions and dispositions and uh, also estate taxes. And if you want to access her, go to SST Law Professional Corporation and get some really good advice. Thanks for joining us. I don't agree with one thing she said, I do think we have a housing bubble, but that's a different conversation. We'll have another time. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night, everybody.